What is up everybody? My name is Zach. Welcome back to Case Digital. And in this video, we answer the question of how to check if a string contains a substring in Python. So without further ado, let's hop right in and start coding. What is up everybody? So like I mentioned, this video is tackling that question of how to check if a string contains a substring in Python. And in this, I kind of want to go over the six different ways. Yes, you heard me. There are six different ways, at least um, that I've used or encountered or seen that you can check if a string does in fact contain a certain substring that you're looking for. Um, I want to go over each of these six different methods and then I want to kind of leave towards the end. So stick to the end because in the end, I'm going to kind of give you what I feel is the easiest and most simple way to check if a string contains a substring. So without further ado, let's start talking about the six different methods that you can use to find that substring within a string in Python. Okay, so to start out finding our substring in Python, I first want to start out with the methods where you would require a you to use an import or another module to complete this. Um, and one of the first ways I want to, or one of the first methods I want to show you is using the module of RE, which is essentially the regex module where you can use a lot of different um, regex operations to find this. So to do this method, essentially all you'd have to do is you'd first import re, um, import that module, and now you can use it, right? So I can go um, if re, and then our, the regex operation allows you to do, do a bunch of different you know functions to try this. But one of the one of the ways that we want to find and see if a substring is within a string is using search. So to do search, you'll just do search, and then you'll give it the pattern. And now the pattern that we want it to match is our substring. So we'll pass that in. Um, and I failed to note in the beginning, but essentially I set up this uh, this full string of case digital is awesome and the substring that we're trying to find, which is case digital. And so to do this, you'll pass in the substring to the pattern, um, and that's what we're trying to match, and then you'll give it the full string. So you give it a full string, and then essentially all I have to do is that's it. I can do this do an, with an if statement. And if there's a match, it'll pass the if statement. And if not, th then it'll go into our else condition. Um, but we can just say print, and I can say, found and then I can print this out and I want to show you kind of what it gives you so if I just copy this essentially you'll see this is the values that it gives you if it is found otherwise we're just gonna say print not found so now if I run this you'll see that found yeah we got it because case digital obviously is within case digital is awesome so when you get this, this kind of gives you the object that it returns saying, hey, yeah, like you match this case, uh, you matching case digital, it, it was found, and it kind of gives you some more information there. Um, but that is one of the ways that you can use, um, that is one method essentially to find a substring within a string in Python. And it's using regex package, the RE package, um, and that's how you do it. So let's start talking about another way that you can actually use another import to find a substring within a string in Python. So another method that requires an import statement, like I mentioned, is the actual using of the operator import. So one way to do this is using operator contains. That's essentially what we're trying to do. And what you can do is do import operator, and then I can say if operator dot contains, and then I give it um, the string, or the substring, I give it the substring, uh, substring, and then I give it the full string. And I say, basically, if that works, then um, print again, we'll just do this stuff right here except we're going to switch it up so we're showing you what exactly the operator cont dot contains gives you and then we're going to say else you know not found so if we run this you see that oh whoops, sorry i messed it up it's you give it the full string and then the substring that was my bad um i was getting mixed up but essentially, if I run this again, you'll see that I get like, so the first time around here, this is using RE. And maybe I should maybe I should make a print statement to say what we're using. So print regex. And then I'll do here, we'll say print operator contains. And if I run this again, you'll see that Let's we'll see the new line so we just can see. So you can just see. This is just one way that you can visualize stuff using new lines. So we run it again real quick. Um, and I probably should put it in the print statement as well. 
There you go. Okay, so the first method, regex. That's what regex gives you when it finds it. The second method is using operator contains. Um, and when you find it, it basically is just a true or false. Like, hey, did, I, did you find it or not? And so that's another way that, you know, what you can use it with an if statement. Um, and this is one way that if you need like to get a Boolean value out of it, you can just say, hey, operator.contains this, great. Um, then you can, that gives you that answer. And so that's just another method that requires using an import. Like we're importing the operator package or module. Um, and then we're, we're using its its functions within that to see hey is does is there a substring within this string that we're looking for um and i guess i can show you if it doesn't find it so we'll just put it like three case digital three and what happens when they both don't like you'll see like just hey not found so you see they're both getting the same answer <coughs> excuse me so that is just one way that you can actually um or that's another way or the second method of using an import now let's get into start talking about the different ways where it's not requiring you to use an import in python hey i just want to jump in real quick say thank you so much for watching the video so far if it's providing you value, please click that like button below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so we can learn more about software development and programming. And well, speaking of programming, let's get right back to it. All right, so one of the first methods of, of how to find a substring within a string um, it, without using an import is actually using string.find. Like a string object has a, a function in it to you that is just fine, or it can check to see if that string contains um, a substring or, or something that you're searching for. So one of the ways to do this, and we'll just say print, and then we're gonna say string find. Um, is we're gonna just do if now the name remember of our full string was this this variable full underscore string dot find and then you can see like find returns the lowest index and asks where the substring sub is found so like when I pass in the substring it's gonna find the lowest index where it starts and if you know the length of that substring then you can find you can you know extract out that whole substring if needed so we're just gonna say find and then we're gonna say sub and we're going to say as long as it's going to remember this returns the the lowest integer so if it's at the very beginning it's returned zero um, if it's in within the middle, it's going to return the middle. If it fails to find it, it's going to return a negative one as it states here. It returns negative one on failure. So we're just going to say if full string dot find of substring is not equal to negative one, then we're going to say print. Hey, we're going to say all this information right here, essentially. Um, and let's show you also what this outputs when it does find it. So if we run this, you'll see that we get, oh, excuse me, we got not found because we're searching for case digital th space three. So if I change this and just do case digital, um, you'll see that it found that string. So we got the regex, we got the operator contains, we got our string find, it found it, and it's at index zero. Now let's say if we did, we just removed the, that we removed the C, let's see if it finds that. You can see they all found it, and then the string.find returns, again, the lowest integer of where it started finding it, which is at index one of the string. Because remember, uh, or is it the, yeah, index one of the full string, So which starts right there, because again, Python zero base. So zero, one, and that's where our substring starts. So that is one of the first methods that you can use that doesn't require to use an import, and it's actually pretty intuitive that Python, um, you know, they already made it available using the string, the string class, and you can just use one of those methods to use it. So next we're gonna jump into another method that is often used, and we'll start talking about that. So going right along with using some functions within the string class, uh, the native string class in Python, um, one of the ones is called index, and Essentially, you can use this function of index to check whether or not uh, a string contains a certain substring. Um, but one thing to caution on this one, and I don't, I don't particularly like this one as much, is because this can throw some errors. Basically, like if it doesn't find it within the string, if it doesn't find your substring within the string, it throws an error or an exception. Um, so you kind of you have to wrap. If you do this method, you have to wrap it in a try catch kind of else scenario where you do try, which is going to say, hey, try this. If you're not familiar with this, it's going to say, hey, try this um, this line of code um, or try this block of code depending on where you put your catch. Like I can do, for instance, in this one, I'll do full string dot index. So again, return the lowest index in S where a substring is found. And then just to note, it says raises value error when a substring is not found. So if I do this and I say substring, then I can go like I can do more blocks of code and it'll just say, hey, try this block. And then if it doesn't work, you can do accept. And I can say print not found. And then I can do an else, which is just another way. Like you can you can put all the code that you put in your else essentially to under here. Um, 
you can you can do either way. Like I can do this and I can say print all this stuff. And if it fails, like it won't print this and it'll just go to the accept. Otherwise you can just do this else and you can do, um, oops, you can do this. And then I can give you the index that it returned to that. A lot of times the index method is used for like, um, like you know a substring is in there, but you want to find exactly where within the string that it starts. And like you don't know that, but you like know this string is going to contain this substring. But I just I just need to know where it starts, and I can get the length or go from there, do whatever you need to do with it. Um, so index, I would say, like is more of a, a use case where it's like I know it's in there. I just want to know where it starts. Whereas some of the other methods are like I don't know if this is in there or not. So like this is how you find out, and they can also give you. You know, some of that, you know, some of them can give you the information of where they start, like we saw, like with the string.find, and some of them just tell you, like, yep, it's in there, um, which is something in the case of like the operator.contains. And so if we run this method right here and we're searching again, full the full string that we're searching through is case digital is awesome, and the substring we're searching for is case digital. Now, if we run it with using the index method, you'll see that, hey, it found it, it's at zero, just kind of like string find. Uh, just like the, the the find method, the index will just return that lowest index of where it found it, which is at the index of zero. If it doesn't find it, um, and we run this, we'll just get, hey, not found, just like the other ones. But just to show you this, I want to kind of take off this except. Um, essentially, I just want to take off all this code, and I want to show you, like, if we ran this, and it's not in there, what happens? Like if you didn't surround it with a try catch. So if it doesn't find it, you get this error of, hey, value error, substring not found. That's why you need to kiss, you know, that's why you need to put it in the try except block. And so that way you can not end your, your code because you can see that this terminated our code and it didn't print the statement that we have here, which is not found. So just one thing to be aware of with, with that. Um, but that is essentially one of the other methods that you can use that doesn't require a import and is also with a, a function within the string class. So we're talking about one of the last um, other methods that I like that you can do and then we'll get to our last method that I find which is the easiest and I use a lot in my day-to-day -day programming. So one of the last methods that you can use within a string class to actually check whether or not a substring is within a string is called count or is named count and essentially um, what that is, and let me just get this set up really for a string, and there's a count. Um, what you can do is, in this method, you can say if, you give it the, the name of your string, or a string, so you, I could do like if s.count, or I can do like my variable full string.count, um, and I give it my substring. This is what I wanted to find, right? Um, if I give it this, this is gonna return, like, like it says here, it's gonna return the number of non-overlapping occurrences of substring sub in string S. So it's basically gonna count how many times it sees that that's non-overlapping. And if you're gonna check whether or not, if you just wanna check whether or not a string contains a substring, you just say if full string dot count of substring is greater than zero, then we're just gonna print, we're just gonna print this information out, right? That's all, that's all you really need to do. Um, I'm just going to print all this out, um, and let's show you what this this returns. Um, I mean, basically, this is just used to find the number of occurrences of a substring um, within a string. And so, if I run this, you should see that again we're using the full string as case digital is awesome. Uh, the substring we're from currently is case digital. So, if we come down here, the string dot count found one occurrence of case digital within case digital is awesome. And um, just so you see like what I was talking about with it, just counting the occurrences, in this string, case digital is awesome. You can see that there's a couple I's. So if we wanted to, we could just say, hey, count this number of I's. And if I put that here as well, um, you can see what it'll return, which is essentially, hey, it found three occurrences of I in case digital, which is um, one, two, and three. So that's just how count works. Like you just say, hey, is it there or is it not there? And if it's there, it'll count it up or it'll count how many times it's there. And if it's greater than zero, you found it. And so that is probably one of the last methods that you can use using the, the one of the last methods within the string class that you can use to check whether or not a substring does contain a or a string does contain a substring. So now I kind of want to get into 
my favorite method, which is of, of how you can check whether or not a string or a string contains a substring. All right, so like I mentioned, now we're gonna start talking about my favorite way and what I think is by far probably the easiest way to check whether or not a string contains a substring in Python. Um, and this is using what's called the in operator. And this is one of the methods that doesn't require, um, it doesn't require you to use uh, another module to import or anything like that. It's basically, you can just say, and I'm just gonna really quick, we can just say print, this is going to be the in operator. And you can just say, if substring in full string, we found it. We just print all this stuff out and I can just show you what this returns. Um, so we can just, if we run this again, you'll see that the in operator is found and just returns true. To me, look, that's super simple. You don't have to work, you don't have to remember whether or not um, if the string class has a, what methods you can use or what the name of the methods were and how, like what they return. Like, like for count, you have to return that, hey, it returns a number. So like it's greater than zero, then it's one. For the index cl class, you have to remember whether or not, like, you know, if it's there, it's gonna, re it's not gonna return, a, it's not gonna throw an exception, but if it's not there, you have to wrap it and try catch. So you have to be very careful with this one. Um, in the find, you have to, you know, remember whether or not, like, if it doesn't find it, what is it returning? Like this negative one. Um, and these other ones, like regex, you have to remember, like, you have to remember how to use regex, first off, for that, um, which, but in this case, is pretty simple. And then the operator, you have to remember, like, you know, you have to remember, like, uh, this is one I don't often use, but like, you have to remember, like, what packages can do this type of thing, like object, operator, or regex. In, using the in operator, I can just, that's like normal speaking for me. Like is substring in string. That's basically what you're asking here. Like I could essentially assign this to a variable and be like found, or I can say is found and just say substring in string in full string. And I can just say, if it is found, boom, run that. You can see that it's found the in operator. It's found super simple like one line of code, not having to import, not having to remember anything, you just like your normal speaking. So that's my favorite way to check whether or not a string contains a substring in Python. So I would say play with these different methods. They obviously have their different use cases. Like for instance, if you need to know the index value, then maybe maybe this is not your best option because you'd have to do this and then one other thing such as find. Whereas if you do like index or find, they can help you get, they can help give you the index index numbers of where those substrings start. But if you just need to check plain and simple whether or not a substring is within a string, in is the way to go, the in operator. So play with these, try out them, you know, try it with your different use cases. Like I mentioned, they, they all have their use case. Um, and just see what you what you like the best and what works best for you. If you have a method that works that you like that maybe has not been talked about, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to hear about it. And until next time, keep on coding. Hey, thank you so much for programming with me today. I really appreciate it. And I hope this video provided you value. And if it did, hit that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed, we'll subscribe. Let's keep learning together. And until next time, keep on programming.